It's round seven of the US Championship. And I want to look at the game between Ray Robson and Wesley So. Wesley on 50%. I'm expecting him to power through in the second half of the tournament. Ray Robson on plus one, just a little bit better, um, but playing lots of draws so far, very solid. I find this a really instructive game. It shows how precisely you have to play in order to finish someone off. And there's a link with an old game of Paul, Paul Morphy's as well. Ray Robson with white and... It's a Nimzo Indian, so Wesley wants a combative opening, wants some imbalance, and Ray Robson goes for the so-called Rubenstein variation. Of course, this is uh, very orthodox, very sensible. Why not just bring your pieces out and just you have a nice solid pawn chain there in the center. And here the main moves are c5, d5, you can also play b6. These are the main lines. Wesley goes for bishop takes knight. Now, to my eyes, this looks really unusual. Voluntarily exchanging off on c3. But this is a very modern way of playing. In the sense that, of course, this is a standard Nimzo strategy. You, you want to try and attack this pawn because now it can't be defended by another pawn. But in this exact position, you know, normally you're pushed into this exchange. So why is Wesley playing like this? Well, if you feed this into a computer, you'll see that a lot of the strong computers actually like this move in this position. So this is pure computer research. D6 and now E5. So this is a nice pawn chain. There's a threat here, of course. And what black wants is for white to exchange here and you can see that isolates these pawns now and black gains a lot of play very quickly b6 is nice and you can see this with the center gone that bishop looks pretty nice uh, knight d7 perhaps that knight will land on that beautiful c5 square a bit later um, certainly e4 will be occupied. Excellent compensation for black. What I would like to do is just nudge that pawn to the side and play the bishop to b2. But that pawn on c3 just gets in the way of that bishop. Good compensation for black. Funny thing is, uh, Wesley had exactly this position um, earlier in the year against Aronian. But he was on the white side and there he played knight d2 which is a pretty sensible move, actually. Um, but, well, anyway, Ray Robson played e4. And rook e8. Again, you know, black wants to induce this pawn exchange, which will leave, leave these two pawns isolated. But, of course, castles instead. So this is a pawn sacrifice, as we'll see. And Wesley takes this pawn. Black doesn't have to exchange here. You could play perhaps h6, stop stop that, that pin. And something like this, knight c6. Um, you know, later on this, this knight could switch around here. I mean, this is a pretty standard kind of Nimzo position. That's possible. But Wesley, he's a principled man, and he wants to take that pawn. But you can see in taking that pawn, look at these pieces. They're all on the starting blocks on the queen side, so black loses time. And the knight now has to fall back. You know, if f5, that will weaken the king. That feels very suspicious. Black, uh, white will be able to drive that knight away anyway. And if d5, well, that can just be taken, and it's just too precarious. So after rook e1, the knight fell back. Rook exchange. And now here, uh, Robson goes for h3. Now it's this kind of little pawn move at the side of the board I really don't like. You know, when I see amateurs playing this move, I kind of go, ah, waste of time. 
But of course, you know, you have to know when to break the rules. And in this case, it is an excellent move. Let's just have a look at what might happen if white played bishop b2. That's the move I want to make, getting these bishops flying here. But then bishop g4 is actually quite annoying. This pin has to be broken. I mean, you can do that very easily with g4, but here's the point. The bishop falls back to g6, where it, it uh, well, wants to exchange these bishops off, and that protects the king. You know, black's king is very solid. Once you exchange off the bishop pair, there's only one bishop left now, then black is very comfortable. You can see it's just much easier to operate on these light squares. So in this case, h3 is actually an excellent move, restricting that bishop on c8. So it has to develop another way. On the long diagonal, which of course is, is not bad, um, but well, there, there's a problem. I mean, if this bishop could somehow, well, obviously if it could take here, that'd be good, or land here with impunity, but d5 shuts out that bishop. Not only does it shut out the bishop, but look at these bishops flying across the board. Now, already, to my eyes, this looks absolutely terrifying. I'm a big fan of the bishops, and this is, to my eyes, a dream position for white, uh, and absolutely worth a pawn. And this is just fantastic. Queen f8, stepping away from the e-file, the rook was about to land there, and perhaps preparing to bring the queen's rook over. Right, what now for white? What would you play next, white play? The moment black is solid here, I mean, if black can get the rook over here, perhaps play c6 to break open the diagonal for the bishop, black might be okay. So white has to act swiftly. G4, so the idea is simply to push on again with G5. Push the knight out of the way and then take on H7. So there's a clear threat and that's tricky. If you play G6, oof, look at those dark squares, horrific. So Wesley played H6, but of course now there's a hook means that if white can successfully play g5, then g5 opens. And the next move, king h2, is uh, looks pretty sensible. Of course, putting it on a dark square, there's no dark square bishop, not on a light square. That's important. And it makes room for the rook to swing over to g1. You know, h6 had to be played, but it's a bit of a gift for white. After the game, Ray Robson said he'd actually analysed this position previously. Um, he struck lucky with his opening preparation. Um, and it's a difficult position already for black. I mean, one could try b5 to try and undermine support for the pawn on d5. D5. Wesley plays c6, which, I mean, looks uh, kind of natural, logical. To, uh, to open up the diagonal for the bishop. And white has to react vigorously. g5, so exchange of pawns, and now the knight looks pretty menacing here. Pawn takes. And now white has to play surprisingly accurately. I mean, when I looked at this, uh, I was watching the game last night, and I mean, I just thought white was completely winning. And at first, got, so it looks fantastic. In fact, it's not so clear. And, and Robson now plays accurately. A check. And I like this move because it pushes the king into the corner. And it just means the king can't run away to the, the queen side very easily. If instead, rook g1, which looks fantastic, in fact, after queen e7, there's a chance that the king could escape in, in some circumstances. So I really like bishop h7, pushing the king to the corner. Bishop comes back. Threatening bishop takes knight. Of course, if the knight recaptures, then queen h7 is mate. 
So black needs to react to the threat. Knight e5, blocking the bishop. So the knight gets pushed again. And if knight takes pawn, then this can be taken. And queen here and queen h5 is fatal, actually, for black. Let's go back. So Wesley put the knight on g6. And there are so many tempting moves here for white. Perhaps swinging the rook across. Perhaps taking on g6 and bringing the queen in. But Robson went for bishop takes knight. And then he took on f7. And took on g6. Now the advantage of playing like this is, well, obviously... You know, the pawn front in front of the king has been cleared. The bishop also covers the e8 square, so that rook can't swing over to launch a counterattack. That's important. And now queen f2. Of course, it's all a question of timing. Is white's attack um, quick enough to break through, or, you know, can black counterattack? So first things first, what about pawn takes pawn? This didn't happen. Let's have a quick look. Check here. Rook G, rook E1. Push the queen out of the way first, so there's no check here. And then rook G1. And something very nasty is going to happen here. That's clear. Okay. So Wesley played F5, preventing queen H4 check. Rook G1. So this is a little bit slow motion. Rook comes over. Rook g5. Okay, take care. And now's, now a check is available. Rook g7. So the rook has swung over and just gives the king a little bit of room to, to move over. And it feels as though black could be possibly defending here. How does white make progress? Okay, I'm going to have a slurp of tea. I'd like you to have a little think. How do you win with white in this position? There is really only one way to win. And this is really subtle. And actually, this is a very typical situation when you're attacking a king. White to play and win. What's going to do? Cheers, folks. Well, the obvious way is to keep checking. Check. You take a pawn with checks, feels nice, but no. The king is running away. The king is actually safe on the queen's side. It'll run here and actually has very good protection. What White has done is actually push the king in the direction of its own pieces. So it has cover. Black is fine. So what White has to do is actually cut off the king's escape. Queen h5. This is really subtle. So one point is that it covers the e2 square. There's no check here. But as we're going to see, it prevents the king escaping. So for example, if pawn takes pawn, check. Now what's the difference? Here, check. The queen covers the e8 square. The king cannot escape. And now a nice winning move. Bishop g6. Again, that square is covered. Really important. Otherwise, queen e2 check could be fatal. This rook is threatened. Rook takes rook and queen h8 check. So you can see that before uh, Robson played queen h5, he had to pre calculate precisely you have to get it right. So what did I mean when I said, well, this is a sort of typical situation in the attack? Sometimes when you're attacking a king, you can just do it all with checks and chase the king to a situation where you can win material or checkmate. But here, you have to cut the king off. And it works. Wesley played bishop c8. Protecting that pawn. And now it's a little bit slow motion. Pawn takes pawn. And, well, white can just maintain the position. And actually black can't defend here. And yep, still, e2 is covered, although the rook can also swing back as well. 
Um, so what can black do? Uh, well, what about queen e4? What about a counterattack? In fact, in this case, white wins like this. Here you can do it with checks. Um, if that's taken, then well, rook takes rook is winning. So the king steps the other side, but again, you can do it with checks. Checks. And, well, basically, yeah, white white wins, you know, this, this rook can be taken with check. So you can see sometimes you can just check and chase the king. On other occasions, you have to be more subtle. And it just all depends on the position. And it all depends on accurate calculation. Now, instead of that queen move, queen e4, Wesley went a5. And again, there is just a really subtle move for white that wins in this position. Um, not, not an easy one to spot. Queen h6. So this queen, I mean, it's, it's brilliant stuff. It's gone queen h4, then a little step queen h5, and now another little step queen h6. So why is this winning? Well, black hasn't got a defense. Um, Counterattack doesn't work because the rook just interposes. b5. Okay, and this is the game. Check. And rook g2. Okay, and here Wesley resigned. So why did Wesley resign? Let's let's work it out. Okay, let's let's make another random move on the other side of the board. B4. Well, in this case, bishop takes pawn. Bishop takes bishop, and now the queen comes in, and everything gets taken basically well. It's in, in this case, it's actually checkmate. Let's just go to the end. Or in this position, let's say bishop b7. This can be taken. Bishop takes, and the bishop is picked up, and the queen can return to defend the king. White is a bishop up and will win. Wow, I mean, I'm so impressed by the precision that Robson showed at the end of the game. You need time to do that. You know, you'd, you'd never be able to find such such moves in a blitz game, for example. And, and that, you know, this is why it's it's great to see classical chess. I'm a fan. Um, so with that, uh, Ray Robson moved up to four and a half out of seven. And actually, his live rating has gone over 2,700 for the first time in his career. I mean, he was a prodigy. I think he became a grandmaster at 14. Uh, but since then, he's had a very steady rise. Um, he doesn't Looking at his stats, looking at his past games, he doesn't play a huge amount of tournaments abroad. Um, he did just have a very uh, successful tournament in, I think it was in Abu Dhabi, um, where he played very strong opposition. Um, but, you know, clearly uh, an incredible talent and works very, very hard at the game. So he's on four and a half out of seven. Uh, Caruana won again. He is still in the lead. Five and a half out of seven, playing very well. Wesley on three out of seven. Um, it, it's really tight. Um, still six rounds to go, but yeah, Caruana with a point lead at the moment. There you go. Thanks for watching. I forgot I was going to show you a Morphe game. <laughs> Hang on. Let, let me just retrieve that one. Yeah, I mentioned at the start that there's a link between this game and a famous game of Paul Morphy. Paul Morphy against Adolf Anderson. Well, this was their celebrated match played in Paris, 1858. It's a Scandinavian. Um, and, well, Morphy claims the centre. Let me just show you this, or well, the start of this game, very quickly. And white has a very nice centre. Ah, you can see there's a certain similarity. Morphy delighted to claim the two bishops. This bishop moves to the long diagonal. Mm -hmm. So you can see some similarity. Bishop comes to d3. And if bishop takes pawn, then rook g1, and that will crash in here. Knight d7. Yeah, knight's the same, as in 
Wesley uh, Robson against So. H6. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps you're getting the idea now. Now, not exactly the same. In this case, Morphy wasn't able to shut out this bishop. But look, there's a little hook that you can latch onto here. What do you play with white? What did Morphy play? Well, we've seen Robson's strategy. I think it's pretty clear what white should play here. And Morphy played h3. King h2. You can get away with this when you can when you control the center like this, because black can't counterattack. And rook g1 and g4. There you go. Exactly the same strategy, basically. These bishops look so powerful, backed up by the queen. And if you can play g5 and open up the position, white just has a fantastic attack. And Anderson actually played g5 here. And, well, there was a, a, a great struggle, but basically Morphe is better in this position. There you go. Thanks for watching.